There are only six World Heritage Sites in the Philippines. The cultural ones are the Baroque churches of the Philippines, the historic city of Vigan, and the rice terraces of the Cordilleras. The natural ones are the Puerto Princesa underground river, the Tubataha reefs, and finally, the Mount Hamigitan Range Wildlife Sanctuary. This is an important site because the Philippines is one of the most severely deforested countries in the tropics. In the 1900s, 70% of the country was a forest. Today, that figure is under 25% and dwindling. Deforestation doesn't only prompt the loss of trees, but also of habitat for numerous species. So shouldn't we protect what we have left? For the last 50 years, the Philippines has always been talked about as a nation on the rise, with high growth potential and touted as the next big destination. The country has so much to offer and the tides are finally coming in and we want to show you this beautiful nation and what needs to be done to preserve what makes these islands special and keep them more fun forever. So join me as I take a closer look into the archipelago. We got two special guests, Mr. Becoming <laughs> Filipino himself and drum roll please. <laughs> the more important person. <laughs> Rob Machado of the Philippines. So we're about to get our car here at Hertz and then we're gonna head out to explore the region. We explored the east coast of Dabao Oriental earlier this year. It's blessed with beautiful coastlines, lots of surf, and long stretches of beach. The only area we didn't have time to visit was the peninsula nestled between Pujada Bay to the east, the Pacific Ocean, and the Davao Gulf to the west. It consists of three municipalities, Governor Generoso, San Isidro, and Mati. Most people drive past this area when they head straight to Mati proper, but we thought that it would be worth a second look. Surfboards in tow, hoping for some waves. Not a lot is written about this area online, so research was very slim, but that's part of the adventure. We drove for hours on dirt roads, and unfortunately, at this time of the year, there were no waves in sight. We don't know how far this road goes, but it looks like it's gonna be dirt road all the way up, and our plan is to just drive until basically the road stops. What I just love about it is just it feels so pristine, so raw, so real, and all the locals are extremely welcoming, and that for me is what makes this country so special, is you can go to places where they're not really used to having a lot of tourists come in, and yet they welcome you with a huge smile. Stunning, absolutely stunning. On our way back, we drove past one of the most popular landmarks in the area, the lighthouse of Cape San Agustin, and just waited for the sun to set. We found a little house to sleep in around Governor Generoso, just had a simple dinner, and talked the night away. We woke up quite early in the morning, um, around 5.30, and we had no idea where we were sleeping. This place was extremely quiet. We had a hard time finding some food. Um, but then look at the view that we woke up to. Pretty special. Uh, 
Uh, meeting our guides, we're going to go over our itinerary and plan over the next three days. So we're here at the Protected Area Management Office for the Mount Hamigitan Range Wildlife Sanctuary. I'm excited. Our main purpose for this trip was to explore Mount Hamigitan, and if you are here for the same reasons, you can opt to stay an hour away from the San Isidro jump-off point in Mati City, where you can enjoy resorts, restaurants, and surfing adventures. This place can get quite busy on weekends, as it is a popular tourism spot in Mindanao. Ah, we've always said, if you're doing long road trips, uh, instead of buying like little pieces of uh, plastic each time in bottles, buy big tubs or like those big blue ones that you can kind of just use a spout to refill your bottles. Makes more sense, especially if you're out for like five days and you're a big group. We set out at 8 a.m. the next day with about eight local guides, two ladies from the DNR, fully geared up with food and tents, ready for a three-day, two-night hike to properly discover our surroundings. <clears throat> so we're just given some ID trekker IDs. This is the first time I've ever experienced this in the Philippines. So we will go ahead. Ready? Yeah, okay. ready. Okay. If you're interested in doing the hike, this is a longhouse um, that trekkers can actually rent out before doing the hike. This is the start of the trail. <laughs> Since this is a protected area, there is a defined carrying capacity. And if you would like to hike it like we did, you'll have to inquire in advance with the superintendent's office to secure your permits. More details will be given in the caption below. They only allow about 50 visitors per month to trek inside the 16,000 hectare protected area and 9,000 hectare buffer zone. We were told that before us, only 500 tourists have climbed the site as we did. From here on, you will be seeing a lot of flora, especially flowering plants. Yeah. So I hope you, we can get it. you can get everything. First time I've actually seen camera traps in the Philippines. Pretty cool, so they use it to document any wildlife coming through here or if there's any illegal human activity, poachers and stuff like that. They can data log it here. Um, they have a bunch of camera traps all over uh, the protected area. Fresh water. We're currently using the Lawin Forest and Biodiversity Protection System. This is a an upgraded program of the DNR wherein our patrolling is now um, governed by tablets and cell phones. And something personal. The Mount Hamigitan Range Wildlife Sanctuary represents a complete, substantially intact, and highly diverse mountain ecosystem. Home to 1,380 species, with 341 of them being endemic, meaning only found in the Philippines. 12 of which can only be found in Mount Hamigitan, and many of them are critically endangered, such as the Philippine eagle and cockatoo. Dude! What? That was a wild <laughs> tarsier. <laughs> Holy After hiking about an hour and a half in kind of like the deep forest, we finally get to our first clearing. Sun shining, it's a good day. We're about four hours, um, 30 minutes into the hike, and we have four hours to go. <laughs> We started the day around 9 in the morning. It is now 5 p.m. So about an eight hour hike. It's not a really tough, technical, hard 
climb, but it's long. I think we did around 15 kilometers, and I just, I don't know why, maybe I just didn't eat right or something, but I started feeling really tired and fainty at the end. <sighs> So happy that we're here in Camp 4. They have a little platform going. We're gonna start setting up the tents. Set up. Say what's up, hello, hola. Out with the yo, say au revoir. I got all kinds of wild. I make it go bang, boom, pow. I got the magic touch. This is the site of the largest pygmy forest in the world. And what this is kind of like, the significance of this place is basically that at the end of the day, nature will persevere because it is a very hostile environment for trees to grow in. The soil isn't extremely rich in the minerals and nutrients that they need to grow to full height. And that's why most of the forest is actually stunted. Sun's up, so we're drying up from all our wet moist clothes. Watch me how I do just watch how I do it. I recently teamed up with the Department of Tourism in the Philippines to try and promote locations that really take to heart what sustainable tourism means. We've done previous episodes in Sagada, in Bohol. We've seen that they have some issues. Um, this is actually the first location where we come in to where there are no issues. Um, and I think that's great because Mount Hamigitan is exactly what sustainable tourism is. You know, three major pillars. One, it's a natural attraction that is not at all touched or modified by humans. Two, it helps the community because all the guides, all the porters are all from the local community. And three, what I love the most about this is that there's a carrying capacity. I've never been someone that's really interested in plants and small things like this, but then when you're in a situation like this where you don't have social media, you don't have phones, um, you have nothing to distract you, but you really are just focused on what's around you, you really get engrossed in it. Um, and what I love about it is the people that are with you are so knowledgeable because this is their stomping ground. And that's absolutely amazing too. So whatever models built here in terms of preservation, in terms of education, in terms of a different way of traveling the Philippines, I really hope to see this develop in other places because we do have the potential to have beautiful, natural, national parks where the park rangers, the scouts, the guides are all extremely respected. You know, it's a very tough job that they're doing and they need all the government support as much as possible to make it happen. Para na ko, importante ko kayo siya ang Mount Hamigitan. Okay. Siya manggod ang source na mo diri. Limbawa sa tubig. Kung wala ang Mount Hamigitan, siya ang nagagunit sa tubig nga mong ginagamit sa ubos. Pag mawala ang Mount Hamigitan, sigurado mong yun may nga mahubas. Kaya ang mong nga nang obserbahan sa bang mga lugar. Sama sa Surigao, nga gimina ang ilahang lugar dito. Wala na sila tarong tubig. Samantala ang Mount Hamigitan, hantod ka ron nga mong tubig limpyo pa kayo. Kung imuhang imnon ang tubig rin, lahig yung lasa kumpara sa ubang tubig. Pure good siya nga kung ano, naabi siya yung medisina, bitaw na kasakul. Hey Erwin, wanna come to the Hidden Garden? Some parts of the forest have these like crazy otherworldly structures just covered in like alien looking moss. It feels like an enchanted forest. It's so cool. A local conservation push made this a protected area in 2004. And in 2014, they got it on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list to give it further importance and to remove all mining and logging claims to the area. In 2018, it was finally reopened to the public. Maraming illegalista dito noon. Pero ngayon, pagpasok ng tourism sa aming bundok, wala na yung nag-illegal. Ang kini kaya tungod magudog alang po sa amuang nga. Iproteksyon na ginamo kaya wala naman po ilaing gawin nga 
kuan dari, di ba? Karena mayo pinag importante na mo dari ang Mount Hambigitan. Kaya nagtanaw mong pagyod mo nga. Kaya nga Mount Hambigitan, dili magini ang mga apod sa kinaiyahan magini. Sa kinaiyahan po yung naghatag na sa mga labong gahom. Muna nga, amo lang po gisunod o kung say ang ayan gano'ng buhato ni Ani. This place actually feels like a national park, the ones where the summit isn't the only attraction, where every day you can explore different sites, all from a central base camp. Everything here is a potential point of interest, from the dense forestry to the shy animals to the plants you see along the way. It's crazy to think how different uh, your surroundings get. This is called the hidden garden because it looks like someone, our gardener, actually takes care of it, but this is completely wild. But the trees are perfectly spaced. They look like they're praying to a higher spiritual being, and it's beautiful. We spent our nights at Camp 3, a surreal experience, where a platform was built for all the research teams that stay here weeks on end to study the whole site. A place lost in nature, sitting inside the 600 hectare pygmy forest. Yeah, I think the coolest part is that, again, it's just us in the middle of a huge 1,200 something hectare field of pygmies now. <laughs> Remember the time you weren't going to bring Tanay last year, one? I will now. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you did, right? <laughs> yeah. nice. That was probably one of the worst sleeps I've had in a while. Time to summit. This is the earliest I've ever had salted fish and rice. It's never tasted this good ever. We were just treated to a spectacle of nature. It felt like Mother Nature herself was taking a brush of multiple colors and just painting it on this blank canvas this morning, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, what I love about Mount Hamigitan is that it's not about the summit. Uh, you have a base camp, but then you have so many options of doing different things. So it actually does feel just like a national park where you can stay a couple of days, choose your adventures, go here, go there, and then on the last day like we're doing today, summit. I really hope that people get to experience this just the way we did, because it feels so real, so natural, and everything's so friendly, and the energy just really mellows you out, and the people with you make it even that more special, that much special. It's good enough for me. Ready to fall